or hydatid in humans. Those are the tapeworms that we're going to talk about. Here's a... Oh, yeah, that, that, that would be probably... that. Yeah, sure, thank you. Yeah, okay, here's the... It's not the human, as far as I know, it's not the human tapeworm, but they can be... Now you can count the number of folds, multiplied by 40 centimeter, and can realize how big that tapeworm would be. Um, the, they are normally identified, and I would like you to sort of uh, know the salient features. The shape of their head, or is referred to as scolex, and the shape of the, sh uh, the uh, segmented body segments. These body segments are actually reproductive organs, and the, these are ovaries that have branching. They have, may have many branches or a lot fewer branches, okay? Or they may be very, very sort of longitudinally stretched. Um, they, they may be uh, that shape. And, th so, and that is what provides the basis for identification of those worms. You do have um, pictures of those in your handout. Uh, and also on the um, on the web, they are distributed worldwide, depending on the dietary habits and the quality of um, uh, cattle and um, pork. Um, the here is the. Um, picture of a, um, a beef tapeworm. It has a head area, and then these segments, those are referred to as proglottids, and as I mentioned, the, those are reproductive organs, actually. They can be motile, as you can see, the, how they can move by folding over, straightening, and then sort of somersaulting um, segments. Okay, uh, Tinea saginata, scolex, has got the, um, these um, suction cups. There will be four of these uh, at the head. Okay, and then proglot, uh, the pro, uh, that's, uh, that's called proglotted, um, and the, um, I'm sorry, scolex, and this is uh, proglotted, and proglotted is long, and many, many branches. Uh, and the, the number to remember really is more than 13. As opposed to um, Tinea solium, the scolex is um, sort of like sunflower. That's why solium, the word solium, is associated with it. Um, these scolex and these these actually raise our hooks, which the worm uses to attach itself to the intestinal uh, mucosa. And here the uh, ovaries are a little bit shorter. The the proglottids are a little bit shorter. Not only that, but branching is very much limited at nine, ten, that sort of number. So if you see anywhere that the many branches of the ovary versus that, you should associate that, those with um, the respective tapeworm. The life cycle is, um, you know, almost, um, uh, uh, it is um, the, the, um, the cattle uh, the, or the pork are the links to the life cycle and humans get uh, infected when they eat the flesh that contains the cysts. These are referred to as cysticerci or cysticerci. And um, they are, they can be in the liver, they can be in the muscle, they can be in the brain. Uh, so whatever part they are in, if that is consumed with improper cooking, they can, uh, enter the, um, resist the stomach environment, the, the larvae, 
You can resist the stomach environment, migrate to the uh, intestine, and then they mature to become fully grown worms and produce proglottids that are extruded in the fecal material. And those proglottids, they are, they, um, they produce eggs, those, those are ovaries, they produce, and they are hermaphroditic, so male and female are in the same proglottid. And they are going to pr uh, produce fertilized eggs, and that it will be laying around on the, um, in the grass, uh, grass, and as the animals graze, pigs are on, uh, omnivorous, they use vegetation as well as the uh, meat, but the, as they graze, they are ingested, those, those eggs are ingested, they will hatch in the intestinal tract, they, they will produce larvae, and those larvae are going to migrate into the different tissues into different tissues, and when those tissues are consumed by humans, the humans are going to get infected. So it's a cycle between animals that get infected by consuming the egg. Humans get infected by consuming the flesh. There is one exception to that, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> Okay, the symptoms uh, depends on the worm burden. One worm may not do anything much to produce much symptom, but um, the uh, more than one or two or many worms are going to produce some symptoms, and those, those will be include abdominal discomfort, epigastric pain, vomiting. It's all due to the presence of the worm. <clears throat> Other organs, in humans, in humans, beef tapeworm is not going to produce any other symptom than gas, gastro and, uh, and intestinal um, uh, involvement. However, the, 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 the beef tapeworm, that's uh, saginata. However, in the case of tinea solium, humans can get infected by ingesting egg as well. Okay? So beef tape, the, the, the flesh containing cysticerci, either from, for, uh, from tinea solium or tinea saginata, can infect humans. And that will be GI tract infection. Whereas in the case of tinea solium, humans can also get infected by consuming, by ingesting eggs. And those eggs are going to hatch in the GI tract, and they are going to produce larvae. These larvae are going to migrate into different tissues, and they are going to produce cysts, just like they produce cysts in the... Um, in, in, uh, in their intermediate host being pigs. Okay? So that's, that's a very important distinction in, um, uh, to, to, uh, to note between the tinea solium and tinea, tinea uh, saginata. Tinea solium can produce cyst. Tinea saginata can only produce GI tract infection. Um, the, where, and depending on where the cysts uh, localize, there will be, they may be in brain, uh, they, that will cause encephalitis, eye uh, leading to blindness, lung, um, lung abscess, liver abscess, and uh, uh, any symptoms related to the, uh, those organs. Okay, here is a picture of cysts. Um, a muscle cyst. Here is a um, heart. Many, many cysts. It can be, it, this is from the cattle. In humans, tinea solium cyst in the brain causes uh, various neurological um, symptoms depending on uh, 
where the cyst is localized in the brain. And uh, by some estimate, a large proportion of neurological problems in the, uh, some South American countries and as well as other developing countries is due to cystocytosis. Here is my uh, autopsy brain showing the cystis, cysts there. Okay, diagnosis is based on symptoms. Often these things are revealed on, if these are cysts, these are, will be uh, revealed on x-ray, uh, on radiography. And I thought I had some pictures of those. It may come later on. Symptoms are history of uh, Diagnosis based on symptoms as well as history of eating um, undercooked beef or pork or salads that may be uh, contaminated with um, um, tinea solium eggs. Typical scenario, you're visiting a farm uh, in some developing country and you come back and you have certain problems um, and there may be cysts in the in, a, in the muscle or other organs. The definitive diagnosis is based on recovery of proglottis in the stool or the eggs in the stool. And the proglottis will be, here is the picture of proglottis or eggs. Tinea solium and tinea saginata eggs, one cannot distinguish between the two. Quite honestly, you don't have to distinguish between the two because the, uh, the symptoms are the same, GI infection symptoms are the same, and treatment is the same as well. Okay, and here is Tinea saginata, multiple branching of the ovary and limited to, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine or so branching. Okay. Um, CNS symptoms, if it is cystopsychosis, CNS symptoms are symptoms involving other organs, a history of ingesting food with tinea solium eggs. Radiographic localization of cystopsychosis establishes the organs involved. Here is another picture of Okay, there and there, cysts in the brain. Here is a radiograph of arms, and there's a cyst here and here. Those of you who are going to go into radiology uh, may, will probably go through those again. Uh, a few years ago, there was a student after graduating during his residency, he sent me an email. He wanted a whole collection of my parasitology slides and presentations. So, you know, he had them because one of the uh, segments of the radiology um, residency was, uh, you know, to, uh, how one identifies different uh, worms through radiographs. Okay, treatment is based on, uh, treatment is Quantal, and that is the sort of that would be the uh, uh, drug for all tapeworms and even flukes. Um, prevention, adequate cooking of the meat. One does not have to worry too much about it in this country because meat is not only inspected, but also freezing can kill the organ, uh, the tape as well, cysticerci. So, and here the processing, meat processing is, they do freeze it and then use power saw to cut, cut the meat. So um, uh, that's why we have very, very low incidence, if any, of um, tapeworm infections. Okay, so freezing is good for it. And cystopsychosis, a, a typical scenario. You might see a uh, five-year-old Latin American girl is presented to ER of uh, having focal seizures. She had a history of pinworm infection and more recently abdominal pain and fever. 
after a trip, to, uh, fever after a trip to Mexico. That was attributed to viral gastritis. A CT scan showed ring enhancing lesion that you saw in the other previous um, uh, one of the slides um, in the left parietal lobe with surrounding edema without hemorrhage, suspecting cysticycosis, she was successfully treated with praziquantel. So that's, a, you know, you can see that sort of typical scenarios. Okay, so that's about the beef tapeworm and the uh, pork tapeworm. Any, but I just want to emphasize, you've got to dis make the distinction between the two organ tapes and, and also remember that the tinea solium can cause cysticercosis in humans, whereas saginata does not. Um, fish tapeworm. So you can't eat any beef, and you can't, certainly not the rare steak, okay? Um, and you cannot um, eat uh, improperly cooked rare um, pork either, R rare ham. Okay, the fish tapeworm. The its, its scientific name is Diphyllobotrium latum. If you think of the name diphyllo, chlorophyll, fill, leaf. Di is two. Looks like two leaves. Bathrium means a groove or a ridge. Okay, a groove. So you will see the enlarged picture of that um, and, and realize that why it is named that. And latum refers to the way the shape of the proglottids. Distributed worldwide, a common freshwater fish tapeworm, northern lakes, freshwater, um, they are, the, the fish there is infected, has been found infected with this, uh, with these uh, tapeworms. Um, here is the description. Two leaves, a groove, okay, diphyllo bathrium, and the proglottids are longitudinally stretched, latum, longitudinal, uh, and that's the name sort of describes the morphology of the organism. That's the, the egg, fairly large, but uh, 70, 80 micron, or even uh, 100, 150 micron in one dimension and about 50, 60 uh, micron in the other dimension. Life cycle is from um, humans get the disease by ingestion of fish that has uh, cysts, uh, that, that has in its flesh pleurocircoid larvae. Pleurocircoid larvae are, the, uh, are in the um, in the um, flesh of the fish, humans, when they, if they eat it uncooked. And um, one year I tried to put people off uh, sushi. Well, sushi is mostly uh, sea, sea water, oceanic fish. So uh, you can still enjoy your um, sushi. Don't have to worry about that. Uh, and, um, but the freshwater fish does contain it. Um, and if you don't eat, eat cook probably, and there are some dishes that are based on eating raw fish or uncooked fish. So one has to be careful there. The, these uh, larvae, they are, enter the, they, they, uh, they are swallowed, they resist the gastric environment, they migrate to the intestinal tract, and then that's where they will become very, um, uh, very large tapeworms. And uh, those uh, uh, tapes, they, 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 the proglottis, they will produce eggs. Eggs, if they are laid near water, they are going to wash into the water. They are going to produce uh, myricidia uh, that is swallowed by cyclops, water flea, that, that uh, again, intermediate hosts, just like for the guinea worm. And uh, there is another 
intermediate host uh, the, the being the fish. When fish swallows these infected, um, uh, infected um, uh, cyclops, uh, water fleas, they are going to develop into clear cercoid larvae and migrate to the fish, uh, uh, to the flesh. So they continue the cycle. Um, one or two, again, depending on the worm burden, um, it will be severity of these symptoms will depend on the worm burden, abdominal discomfort, rarely severe, cramping, pain, diarrhea, uh, alternating with uh, constipation. Um, vomiting may occur as they irritate the, the worms are, um, irritate the GI tract. Um, the general uh, is weight loss, and there is a characteristic vitamin B12 deficiency, and of course the uh, any symptoms that are related to um, vitamin B12 deficiency will ensue. Um, that is all due to the physical mass of the um, per, uh, of the worm uh, pr uh, presence, and also some inflammation. The the diagnosis is based on symptoms and then history of eating raw fish or and confirmatory diagnosis will be based on recovery of proglottids or that, that, that are longitudinal, that they are very different from the uh, tinea solium or tinea saginata and, or the presence of a large worm, a lar large egg in the... Um... Okay, treatment is praziquantel, is the drug of choice. And um, the preventive measure would be not consuming uncooked or you know, not properly cooked um, freshwater fish. Freezing for 24 hours, again, kills the worm. So if you don't insist on fresh fish uh, being served as an uncooked delicacy, uh, if it is frozen, then, then it's okay, it's safe. Okay, Hymenolipsis nana is a dwarf tapeworm, is uh, also referred to as dwarf tapeworm. It's a tapeworm of the, um, of the rats, but humans are sometimes infected with it. The, um, it's transmitted to humans with a, by a, a flea, really, from rats to a flea to humans and then back to uh, the fleas. There can be a cycle within, you know, without involving the, uh, the fleas. Okay, the um, lighter infections, nothing significant really, mild abdominal disturbance. So, uh, and then more heavier cases uh, can may cause enteritis. Okay. And the treatment is uh, uh, praziquantel diagnosis based on symptoms, uh, rodent infestations. So if you've got lots of rats around living with you, be wary. Um, ova are found in the feces. Okay. And here is an indiscriminate ovum. You cannot dis uh, distinguish between the uh, ovum of um, uh, beef tapeworm or um, the uh, pork tapeworm or the um, rat tapeworm. Okay, treatment is same as any other tapeworm. Praziquantel is the drug of choice and control of rodent population is a preventive measure. Now we will talk about Echinococcus, Echinococci. There is a Echinococcus, there are two um, genera. Um, there is a, a multilocularis and Echinococcus granulosus. Um, 
the red areas are Econococcus multilocularis, and you can see that most of Canada is, um, has got the areas, is endemic for these um, tapeworms. These are actually sheep tapeworms. A uh, typical scenario, a 32-year-old Kenyan woman presented in Boston with three-month history of cough. This is a, uh, was New England Journal of Medicine uh, published. I have just summarized it. Three-month history of cough that was initially productive, uh, uh, productive of thick gray sputum that had um, gradually become blood-tinged. She had low-grade fever, chest radiography revealed an apparent elevation of the right amy diaphragm. So there's a, there was a, some sort of cyst there. CT scan of the uh, ch uh, chest with contrast medium revealed low density cystic mass measuring 13 by 13 uh, uh, by 10 centimeters in the right lower um, lower hemithoria, hemithora, okay? Um, ultrasound uh, guided aspiration of the um, content of the cyst yielded clear colorless fluid containing protoscolex of echinococcus granulosus. Uh, we'll show you a, a, a sort of more clear drawings and pictures of those in a minute. So that's the three days later, cystectomy was performed with the use of specific precautions to prevent local spread of the disease after adequate anti-parasitic treatment follow-up, radiography demonstrated re-expansion of the right lung. The patient has returned her, uh, to her normal level of activity and there is no evidence of recurrent disease. Okay? So that, that is a typically kind of caucus. It's the causative um, organism, the kind of caucus granulosis. Is, um, these are proglottids, one, two, three, four, very limited number. It's a small, short dish um, tapeworm. What you see in that, that uh, you know, protoscolex that you saw, that is also uh, referred to as hydrated sand, is these are the larvae or protoscolexes that are floating around in the fluid in the cyst. Here. Okay, the life cycle generally is um, um, Humans get uh, infected when they consume either the uh, consume um, any eggs that are laid on the grass or uh, you know uh, the the the, uh, the the fecal material from the carriers. These dogs are carriers. Let's look at the natural life cycle first. The uh, uh, sheep have got these um, uh, cysts, uh, hydrated cysts, that will, be, that will contain those infective proteoscolia, scolia, and then they, the dogs will eat it. They uh, migrate to the, uh, the intestinal canal of the dog, and they will produce eggs that are excreted in the fecal material. And they may lie around and uh, sheep, as they graze, they may eat those and uh, get infected. Humans are really incidental or accidental victims. So typically, if you are a sheep farmer or you're visiting sheep farm and some of the material you may have ingested contains the, um, the, the eggs from these um, tapeworms. And th there it can produce cysts anywhere, abdominal cysts. It may produce the, uh, you know, the, the egg will hatch in the intestinal tract and it is going to produce the um, worm 
uh, larvae that are going to penetrate um, in different tissues and produce those cysts. Symptoms are based on the presence because of the worm, and also it produces uh, enormous ascites or fluid in the, in the cyst. Um, the abdominal distension uh, can result from uh, the um, presence of the worm and growing um, cyst, uh, and the ascites will also cause distension of the abdomen. And I think I may have some pictures around here. Okay, if one looks at this cyst, uh, this is actually Montelocularis. The Echinococcus granulosus produces one large cyst in which contains protoscoliae, okay, uh, those um, uh, larvae. And uh, however, the Montelocularis is a um, little bit different in appearance of the cyst, they have got multiple cysts here, um, like a bunch of grapes. Okay, if one looks inside those um, cysts, one will find a sort of granular wall, um, uh, find a wall around the cyst, and then inside that wall, there may be daughter cysts appearing, or it will have fluid that contains proteus colex, or also referred to as the hydatid sand. Here, sort of sandy appearance. And they're just swimming around in the fluid. Uh, if it is a liver in the liver, uh, there will be obstruction jaundice uh, due to growing cyst, uh, pulmonary abscess, cough, chest pain. Um, it, in that case, it may also cause fever, pruritus, irritation, um, and anaphylactic re reaction. This is one of the um, few um, worms that cause more severe um, allergic reaction, IgE production, and um, allergies. As a matter of fact, when it is um, resected, if there is a cyst there in the abdomen, one drains the fluid or takes out all the fluid first or inactivates the fluid by injecting small concentrations of uh, formaldehyde so that they are fixed and um, protein is denatured. Uh, in the CNS, it will cause uh, unilateral um, epilepsy, Jacksonian epilepsy, and that is due to growing um, cysts. Here's another. This one is definitely the um, uh, hydatid granulosis, uh, the Echinococcus granulosis, not the, the multilocularis that you saw earlier. Um, so those are the symptoms. The, uh, the uh, diagnosis is based on endemicity. Um, in this country, I can't remember if there have been any cases indigenous, but Puerto Rico, there have been cases from the, some of the islands. Spain is particularly maligned. Um, okay, then the symptoms of a growing mass, really. That's all that very indiscriminate symptom. Then, of course, CT scan or X-ray will show the cyst, a little bit more definition of the cyst, uh, and serology, one can detect antibodies against the, um, against the constituents of the organism. The antigen is usually ground up, uh, echinococcus, and um, one tests the uh, blood for presence of antibodies. The skin, there is a skin test available, it's referred to as Cassoni test, and since, remember, it is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction, it will be just like a um, skin test for allergies. Treatment is a surgical removal of the cyst, and also I did tell you that, uh, yes, there is, um, um, one has to inactivate the fluid. Otherwise, during surgery, if the fluid is spread in the body, it is going to cause 
severe and fatal anaphylactoid reaction. Uh, uh, the, the avoidance of um, ingestion of eggs, so good hygiene uh, in the infested area or treatment of the infected uh, canine would be a control measure. Um, Multilocularis, um, as I mentioned to you, is present in colder climates there. Okay, it is... Um, Echinococcus granulosus, similar symptoms, uh, except that the secondary hosts and reservoir are rodents in this case. Okay. In the case of secondary reservoir for the Echinococcus granulosus were canines, wolves, and dogs, whereas in the case of multilocularis is the, um, is the rodents. Okay, that's the picture you saw earlier. Treatment, praziquantel is the treatment, and um, uh, surgical removal of the cyst, the same as for granulosis. So that, that is the flatworms or tapeworms. 